All right, guys, welcome back to another video. It's been a while, but winter is here. Less riding, more working on the bikes. So today I'm doing a little bit of work on the SP650. I'm really, um, I'm, I'm really pumped up to get this bike finished. So I've done a few little bits. I'm gonna show you what I've been doing so far and what issues I've got and last things to do. Uh, I really wanna get this bike on the road because I actually, for some reason, really wanna ride this bike now. So I'm gonna show you guys where we're at. A couple of things I need to do and what I'm, be, what I'm working on right now. So one of the main things I'm working on at the moment is the body, because I want to get the bike painted. So I do want some ideas as well on paint because the bike was originally black. But I think I want to change the color. So let me know what you guys think, any suggestions, and uh, we'll see, we'll take it from there. All right, guys, so here we go. We've got a piece of fair in here, if you guys can see. This is the left side sort of top fairing. And classic issue with these, you can see broken. So these are not the original um, indicators. These ones have these soft sort of floppy rubbers, which are designed really. So if they get knocked, that they don't sort of crack the fairings. But the original ones are big and bulky, quite sturdy. And as you can see, this is what happens when maybe if you drop the bike or if you lean it on a wall or someone knocks into it, you can see this mad cracking around here. So both sides are exactly the same. I've actually done some work on the other one. I'm going to show it to you what I've done. And um, I'm going to show you the process of how I repair this. So let's look on the other side. You guys can see it. So you can see, obviously, this is screwed in here. So all that tension here just causes the cracking. So you can see the cracking is quite bad around here. So... The reason why I got to fix this because I am prepping these for paint. Um, so obviously I need to sort these cracks out before I paint it. Here's one I prepped earlier. You guys can see I've already rubbed this down, uh, rubbed it down with, I think it was 120 grit and then 360 um, wet and dry. So, and you can see I've done some filler work here. So obviously once this is dry, which is pretty much dry now, I'm gonna hit this with probably an 80 grit to shape it. And then I'll use the same sandpapers and get it down to probably a 320 grit. Then I'll be ready to prime this. So I'm gonna show you guys from the other side what it looks like. The repair, so you guys can see here what I've done. And you can see where the cracks are. So you can see these little metal sort of staple things. Um, so it's basically, they're just sort of wet plastic welded in. And, um, you know, you can cut these at the end. I don't really particularly have to cut these because they're sort of on the inside. But um, yeah, this is basically what I've done. So it's quite a strong repair. I put loads of them along the lines or where the cracks are. And as I said, now I fill this fill this up so I let this dry and I'll sand this down and then this one should be ready to go and that's the only thing the only f damage on the fairings were literally both sides of these all the other parts are perfect all right guys so here is a piece that I prepped earlier you guys can see I've already primed this I rubbed this down primed it it's looking good it's perfect there's no scratches and there's no dings so this piece is ready to paint once I've decided what color yeah and this is what I want all the pieces to look like and this is what that piece looks like on the bike. Showing you what it looks like. Okay. So we're obviously going to have to get the tank done. The tank's got some repairs to do. There's a bit of rust. There's some dents here. Um, I may look into seeing if I can get a dent puller and maybe try and attempt this. I've never done it. So it might be a good practice to try and learn to pull a dent. Um, if not, I might just end up feeling it. You know what I mean? So it's sort of is superficial in that sense. So we'll see whether I do that when I get to the tank, which is probably one of the last parts that I do. You can see here as well that I've already done the back parts here. Um, this one did have a little bit of scratches. You might be able to see it here. So I did need to put a little bit of fill out and there was also sort of a little bit of a nick here as well. So I'm gonna fill these two bits, sand them down again, and then primer. But that's pretty much that here at the back you guys can see and that's it now as far as work that i need to do on the bike there's two jobs that i've got to do one the rear black back brakes need this master cylinder bleeding i've got the kit for that uh sorry not bleeding but the seals replaced i've got a master cylinder repair kit for that i've had that for a couple of months just haven't got around to doing it so i need to do that because i have no back brakes you guys can remember i did sprockets and chains and stuff now when i put the bike back together one thing I noticed 
is I can, can't get it into gear. I can get into gear, but as soon as I put it into gear, the, guy, the bike cuts out. Even when I put it on the stand to make sure that the wheels were rotating, it just just cuts off as soon as I put it into as soon as I put it into gear. So I don't know if it's an electrical thing or it's a mechanical thing. So I'm probably gonna have to take this plate off and check to make sure that I put everything back together correctly. Anybody got any ideas? Let me know what you think. I'll quickly show you guys it in action so you can see what I mean. Um, I did have to charge the battery. I charged the battery off for a couple of days and uh, had a start up on it today and it's pretty much started up. that alarm is so annoying right so let's see um, so let's give it a little choke and start up some reason it keeps cutting out i'm not sure why back to neutral also you guys saw it in neutral but the wheels slightly spinning so i'm wondering if the clutch plates maybe are stuck i'm not sure but it was working before i did strip the bike and clean up the parts and put it back together so i'm wondering whether it's my clutch adjustment it's not right um i can't remember it's been a while since i worked on the bike so that I need some ideas for and something I'll be addressing very soon. But for now, we're working on the body. But otherwise, the bike is looking good. Um, as I said, itching to get it sort of running and uh, take it out for a ride and so on. So, yeah, this is it here. So let's get back onto the body repair. All right, so first thing we've got to do is get rid of these uh, indicators. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to replace these because they're actually broken so I'm gonna cut this rubber to get rid to get these off and get rid of them get some new ones of these and then I'll be able to put the indicators back on right so right so there we go this is it basically what we're going to do is try to sort of pop it into place the way it should be sort of flat as possible which is pretty much here pretty much good here and then flip it around and some of them I'm going to have to sort of hold it down into place while I'm doing it. And then I'm going to start um, putting these um, staples in. So this is a tool that I'm using, plastic welding gun. I think I probably got this on Amazon somewhere. 
150 watts basically it's like a soldering gun but it's got a trigger so it's only on when you press the press the button then it heats up uh, the elements and then it will weld it so i just got to make sure i'm kind of have to get it right you don't want to push it melt it to go all the way through you sort of want to get it sort of in the middle of the plastic somehow so the kit comes with loads of different size staples these are ones that i'll be using ones that are best for this they sort of look like this if you guys can see that and what you do is you sort of stick it on here goes in these two little holes like that you guys can see okay and then i'm going to press it down into the plastic and i'm going to press the trigger until it melts and then stop when i got it where i want it so i'm going to start with one here let's go for the first one So you just want it to go just sort of below the surface hold it for a few seconds just let it dry or let it cool down should i say because it's really soft the plastic and then i'll let it go so just put one in here now which is basically on the other side of here you can see a little bit of a bubble come up here so i'm trying to not get it to go too much through but you can see you can see already how that's not moving anymore obviously i'm going to put loads of them in it uh, by the time i finish with it it should be quite strong okay so let's go for one here so as soon as it sort of disappears then i stop and basically just keep putting them in so you just want to put them close as possible to each other Just noticed that this bracket here is broken off i'm not really sure what clips onto that um so i may super glue this on or something um it's not one of the fairing bolt holes but i'm not sure if there's something supposed to clip into that so we can repair that i could actually repair that with some of these as well actually there's some that you can use for these angles so maybe we'll stick some of that in there and then i'll use some super glue around the rest of it And if you feel you haven't gone deep enough, you can go back over it again because it will just heat it up again and then you can push it in a bit further. So you kind of get chances. So it's better not to go too deep the first time. If you can get it along the line, sort of this way along the line, it's actually a bit better. So you see here that one there is basically gone pretty much all the way across um, the line there and then you 
can see that one there. So I'll probably get one more in that corner there, and then that should be good. Now I've got these little flat ones, as I said, there's different shapes. So depending on what you're fixing, you can use a different shape. I think this one will be good for trying to fix this one. Or maybe, or maybe not, maybe. Um, or I can get one in that corner here. Right on the crack in there. Cool. There you go, that's much better. So that's stuck. I will we'll put some super glue around it as well. Um, or maybe some um, epoxy, epoxy glue, two part epoxy. I've got some here. All right, so that's, that's, that is done. As you can see, that is repair. Just make sure there's no movement in the crack. There's a little bit of movement around here. Uh, I just realized that's around this corner here where I haven't put any. So I'm gonna try and use a different type and see if I can put some around that crack there. go much better lovely cool so what i do is hit this hit this with some 80 grit sandpaper and um i'm gonna do some fill around it once it's all dry then i can sand the entire panel all right guys so this is the first one i did you guys can see i had filled it and i've just sanded it and that one's come up quite good you can see this is where some of the staples are very close um but yeah so there's one or two little pinholes that i might just touch up and sand over but this is the first take as you guys can see it's come out quite good it is nice and smooth i can't feel the transition at all so i'm quite happy with that i will just prime it and then we'll see what it looks like but yeah that's this one done so just fill the other one and uh, sand it down and that'll be the same thing
There you go, so here we go, fill that up, let that sit, then I can sand that down, rub down the whole panel, then it'll be ready for primer. Let me give this another coat. Primer coat, it's looking really good. Gonna be ready for paint soon. So that's it for today's video, guys. I'm gonna stop here. It's getting dark. Um, not gonna be able to do any more painting outside anyway. So I've just got one more fairing to sand down and prime, and then actually I've got the front mud guard or whatever you call it, front wheel mud guard. I totally forgot about that. It just came to my mind. So I need to take that off, rub that down and prime that. So once I've primed those two pieces, that's pretty much it. This bike doesn't have a lot of fairings on it, which makes it easy to paint. It's literally about five pieces um, and they're all quite small pieces as well. So it's sort of like a half fared bike. So um, yeah, once I've primed this, probably maybe by tomorrow I'll have this all done. I'm ready for some paint. So I need to pick a color because I don't think I'm going to go for the black. I think I'm going to do something different with this one. Let me know what you guys think. You've got any ideas? Should I just paint it in one solid colour? Should I do a colour scheme? Something more interesting? Let me know what you think. Okay, guys. So until the next video, I'll see you soon. Please like, comment, subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you soon. Take care. Thanks for watching.